Today, it's my pleasure to have back Julian Sanders, who's our resident Saskatoon and Focus tech expert. Welcome back, Julian. Thanks for having me, Zach. So today we've got a really interesting and almost bulky thing sitting on the desk here. So you're going to have to tell me exactly what we've got in front of us and maybe some of the neat things that it can do. Well, this is a uh, scanner. Uh, it can do slides and negatives, and I can also take prints and uh, make them look like they were taken yesterday. So really the benefit on something like this, uh, you've got some old pieces of 35 millimeter film right there. Yeah, a lot of people have a shoebox full. So yeah, I know I've got stuff like that, and in the past when I've already had it printed, you know, sometimes things happen, you lose photos, I've either taken them in, and it costs a lot of money to, you know, have someone play around with them, but this can actually fix that problem right off the bat, and I can just scan them now. How does that work? Yeah, so uh, you can even do it with a uh, slide. So basically, there's uh, dedicated scanners uh, like this one. Uh, they're uh, fairly affordable. They start around $100. Okay. And uh, you basically, uh, instead of just having a uh, piece like you usually see on your all-in-one print scan copy. Uh, the lid comes off and then uh, this guy slides in here. So you load your uh, film in it and uh, it can take a lot at once in this model. Uh, some of them take a little less and uh, then you, you pop it into uh, the scanner and you can uh, uh, do batch scanning. So that means you can just push a button and it'll scan all of your slides or negatives. A lot of people have slides. I don't know, is there a bunch of these uh, of you when you were a kid? Uh, I don't think they're of me. I always remember my grandparents would go on vacations and they'd come back with the big uh, the big projector and the little slots where you could put those things into. So they did have those, so yep. I'm familiar with them. So it can do those as well. How does right. uh, So these, uh, it, you can take mounted slides and uh, they just snap into the holder and uh, you don't have to do anything fancy uh, to them. It does a few at once for the starter models or a whole bunch uh, if you have one of the bigger ones. And basically, uh, with the way that slides are, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of film that will scan differently. So uh, when you scan one kind of film, it'll look too yellow, or another one, it'll look too magenta. Uh, there's very good software inside of a lot of scanners available now to make it look like uh, that nothing uh, was different. It makes it look like it was taken yesterday. So this right here, I'm kind of a tech guy, but I wouldn't call myself a photography guy. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of the whole process then? Yeah, absolutely. It makes it uh, quite easy too. Uh, there's a lot of uh, software, depending on which scanner brand you go with, uh, that makes it uh, really easy to uh, share online. You can put it on Facebook uh, or on Twitter. Okay. Uh, the other thing, is you mentioned actually it can even touch up photos and take out dust, take out imperfections, things like that, and that also just happens automatically? Yeah, it's actually a special technology. Uh, it's LED lights that scan the slider negative after the uh, first scan does, and it will uh, take the uh, imperfections. So if it's an older negative and uh, it's got a bunch of scratches on it or maybe your scanner got dusty, it gets rid of it without uh, software guessing. So it's very precise and it works really, really well on uh, color slides and negatives. Okay, and you said that something like this is actually pretty affordable. It's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to uh, acquire something like that. You said they started at $100. How far up the line would they go for uh, this like guy? This? The one that I brought is about $600. Uh, it takes a lot more at once, uh, but it, just for $100 to $300, you can get a very good uh, one that ha has the retouching feature built in it and uh, uh, has all of the software too. A lot of them will give you a bundle of software, so you get really good photo editing software. Great. So, and if someone doesn't have time to do something like this, I know that you, really you're right when you say some people have a shoe box, sometimes it's a, a ginormous box. Yep. And uh, if someone doesn't have time to do that, is there another way that they can uh, get all this done? Yeah, you can bring it into a store. Uh, a lot of uh, the better labs will also retouch them for you. Uh, it's just a matter of how many you have. Uh, so if you need a few burnt onto a CD or DVD, it's a good idea to check with the local labs. So something that you mentioned that I wanted to talk more about was Twitter. Right. And Twitter is one of those things that I enjoy using, I know you enjoy using, and it is a really great social media sharing tool. So for those people watching who maybe aren't engaged in that yet, haven't really looked into it, what's, what is Twitter? What's the 22nd uh, pitch on that? Uh, well, it's a really good uh, short information um, medium. So basically, if you're familiar with Facebook, it's the status update portion, but it's open. You don't have to uh, accept people as friends. They can uh, follow what you say on Twitter, even if you don't follow them. So there's everybody from really big movie stars uh, to companies uh, on Twitter, and uh, there's people 
uh, talking back uh, all the way down to uh, the city of Saskatoon. Uh, there's the police are on there and they will frequently tweet uh, road conditions. So if they've closed a road due to weather, uh, they put it on Twitter first, then you'll hear it about it on the radio. Okay, so we can see some of those local benefits to it. So with you personally, um, you're on there, you're on Twitter, you're sharing things both about some uh, interesting things that you're doing uh, over at the store as well as uh, other things in your life. What, what, uh, what's the benefit of that uh, other than, you know, some, sometimes people say that this seems so silly to share the minute details of your life. What's, what's the point? Uh, well, I like the uh, instant engagement because there's been a lot of times where I've had a conversation out of the blue with somebody and it uh, gives you an opportunity to, uh, to meet them. Uh, there's a lot of times where you can find somebody even locally with uh, hashtags, which is basically a search for uh, your city. Uh, so you can uh, find what's happening right now in our community, even in your neighborhood. And uh, you can quickly and easily um, engage. You can make new friends and uh, interact with uh, politicians. Yes, and we've definitely had lots of politicians on the program, and they are active on Twitter and engaging with their community that way. So you said a hashtag is a way of of really having a search function within your the little messages that are sent out 140 characters or less what's the one for Saskatoon and uh how can someone start using that? Uh, well, it's YXE. It's all, always our airports. Uh, so if you want to search on uh, Twitter, you can just go to twitter.com and click on the search box, type in YXE, and see what people are talking about right now. So the one thing you mentioned that I think is a great example of why Twitter can be something that's useful in finding out what's going on in Saskatoon and engaging with the community is you were telling me a story about uh, some of the road conditions and bus times and bus lines in particular that was just really relevant uh, with some of the bad weather in the last few days. Yeah, we had, uh, uh, I was on a, a bus and I tweeted, the, uh, I'd quoted the city of Saskatoon's Twitter account uh, in complaining that the buses were delayed and uh, they answered me back instantly with a suggestion for a route change. Yeah. So it's kind of nice because it was an instant uh, feedback. And that's not something that can happen every day. So, right. uh, I, I, you know, oftentimes you call up and you sit in line and uh, wait for wait to talk to someone. So yep. so that's great. I, I mean, I've I've found that myself. I've chatted with people in Saskatoon and even found new guests to come on the show, and we're just uh, communicating with each other via Twitter. So it's uh, been an interesting way of keeping in touch. Yeah. Great. Well, really appreciate you coming in, talking about uh, the great scanning technology and ways of uh, sharing that with people, and as well Twitter and keeping in touch. So. Thanks again for coming in, Julian. And if anyone wants to get in touch with you via Twitter, how can they do that? Uh, my Twitter is SaskaJules, S-A-S-K-A-J-U-L-E-S. -E Great. So they can find you there and throw in the at sign, and they'll track you down. You got it. Wonderful. Thanks, Julian. Really appreciate it. And we'll have you back soon. Bye.